Why are you back? Because I want that Super Bowl. What's good, Eagles Nation? You heard it straight from Darren Sproles' mouth. Why are you back? I want that Super Bowl. And with that, guys, today I'd like to take a look at the Eagles running back position in training camp because there's going to be a lot of competition at that position. And a few players who probably deserving of roster spots are not going to have roster spots on the Eagles, unfortunately. All right, guys. See you in a few seconds. Is everybody as psyched as I am about this season with the running back position? I have three locks and one one running back who's probably a lock on the roster. So my three locks, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, and then Darren Sproles. You don't sign two you, well, you don't sign Jordan Howard and bring him in. You don't draft Miles Sanders and you don't re-sign Darren Sproles if you don't potentially have roster spots for them. Now, could the Eagles keep another two backs? I think it's possible because I think that Corey Clement is more than likely absolutely on this roster unless there's a trade. Where it gets really interesting is, is if we carry five, who's the fifth back? Is it Boston Scott? Is it Wendell Smallwood? Is it Josh Adams? Who is it? And I think that's where the heart of the debate lies to where we as a community are probably going to have some disagreements about who we think will potentially be that fifth running back. I see Jordan Howard as the featured bell cow back. And this might be a little controversial what I'm about to say, because I know a lot of people are really thinking that Miles Sanders is going to be the guy probably by week three or four of this year. For the Philadelphia Eagles. And I just, I disagree. I don't think Miles Sanders' game is, is to that point yet. I think he's an exceptionally talented back. I think he's in that mold and that cut of a Brian Westbrook and a Shady McCoy, but he's still got a learning curve to go. I mean, if you go back to even a Brian Westbrook, Brian Westbrook was part of that three headed monster we had in the early 2000s with, I don't know if you guys remember, Buck Holter, Westbrook, and Deuce Staley. But Still took Westbrook a long time to really start earning those reps at that beginning of that year. I mean, he had to really work his way almost into the playoffs before he really started becoming a major factor in it. So I do think that Miles Sanders is going to get more reps and he's going to be put in more, you know, game type situations as he learns. But I don't think that learning process is going to be right away because Jordan Howard's still a young back. He's still a work horse back and he's got skill. The only thing I can really think that might really hurt Jordan Howard is if he just cannot learn how to become a receiving back. Then, yes, I can see where Miles Sanders might get a shot. However, that would still depend upon Darren Sproles. Where, do the, where does the coaching staff see Sproles' role? Is it mostly going to be special teams, punt return, kick return, that type of thing? A few plays here and there on the receiving end of things. Maybe a draw out of the shotgun or a draw out of, you know, Something, you know, that line. Um, who knows? And on top of that, can Corey Clement, who we know has shown the ability at times to be able to be that receiving back, can he do it consistently? Can he make that into an actual skill set that he's known for now? And can he also add a little bit to the ground game? Because I do think that sometimes Corey Clement kind of fades away on the ground game and he's got to improve there. But getting back to Miles Sanders, I think the biggest hindrance to Miles Sanders' game is He's going to have to show that he can protect the franchise quarterback if he's in there on a potential passing down to where he might need to be a chip blocker or something of that sort, where he might need to pick up, pick up a blitzer. He can't. He's not going to take reps away from Jordan Howard, Darren Sproles, and Corey Clement if he cannot pick up a blitzer. It's just it's fact, guys. I mean, come on. It's common sense on that. So the rotation I see working, especially at the beginning of the year. It's going to change throughout the course of the year, but the beginning of the year, the rotation I see, it's probably going to be Jordan Howard. It's going to be that number one featured back. He's going to be the hammer. He's going to be the guy when we get the lead, 
we just absolutely smash people into the ground in the fourth quarter because they're going to have to go full contact with this guy. Um, outside of that, I think that second back would be split between Corey Clement and Darren Sproles. I just think those two guys have got to, you know, come together, use both their skill sets to kind of be that one. Darren Sproles can still run the ball a little bit on the outside. Corey Clement is, you know, hopefully it was his health that was hindering his ability to run in between the tackles last year because it seemed like his rookie year that he, he had that ability and he certainly showed it in college. So we'll see if he can pick up his, you know, Wisconsin days. Um, and then I think you'd see basically uh, Miles Sanders at the beginning of the year coming in as that third option. He's going to definitely be a change of pace guy. It's where if we feel like defenses are just really getting kind of lackadaisical and, and you know, we feel like someone maybe they don't, a team doesn't have a, a really good sideline to sideline, you know, linebacker. Well, we're going to bring in Miles Sanders to, to, to test that because if he can get to the outside, man, he's going to be, like I said, he's going to be like Westbrook. He's going to be like Shady McCoy. Good luck bringing him down. How many running backs do I think the Eagles are going to keep? Look, I think no matter how you shake this out, I think there's, there's a high possibility, unless there's a trade, we're carrying five running backs. And I know a lot of you guys are huge fans of carrying that fourth tight end, but if we're carrying five running backs, I think it's doubtful. I think it's really doubtful we're going to carry a fourth tight end. Possibly because I'm pretty sure we're only going to carry two quarterbacks, but we'll see. Um, and that's where it gets interesting. Because number one, how do we work the roster around to fit the fifth running back? Could Darren Sproles really take up a, a spot on the receiving end? Could he be really be slotted in as a receiver and not a running back? It's possible. I could see him kind of working and playing around with that. But in the end, it doesn't matter because we all know that he's still a running back and there's, that still basically means five. So if we're keeping five and we already have Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Corey Clement, and Darren Sproles, who's the fifth? I think that's where it gets really interesting between our candidates, between Wendell Smallwood, Josh Adams, and Boston Scott. So let's just start with Boston Scott. Boston Scott is, to me, a guy that we know can play in this league. He did it, ironically enough, already in New Orleans. But he is the future Darren Sproles, not to the same talent level. I'm not trying to say, like, Darren Sproles is possibly a future Hall of Famer. I'm not going to say he's outright a Hall of Famer. There's a lot of politics that comes along with that kind of stuff, guys. But I, I think from a number you know, from a number standpoint, it'd be hard to argue that he's not one of the best all-purpose, all-purpose backs that we've ever had in the league. Um, I think Boston Scott is that young guy that could fill in and take that place, and I think he's very valuable, and I really that's the guy I hope the Eagles would keep. I can't say with 100% certainty, but that's who I hope they would keep. The guy after Boston Scott that probably is a well-known commodity here in Philadelphia and the coaching staff love him is Wendell Smallwood. It's hard to cut Wendell Smallwood because he's never lived up to the expectations we've had, but at the same time, that man has improved each and every year. He's gotten better at the position. And you know what? In between the tackles, he showed something last year. He showed that he can run with a bit of an attitude and he can actually pick up a yard or two. So I can see that. He's a special teams guy. I could see Wendell Smallwood makes a lot of sense as another team's third running back. And I'm I'm certain someone would would pick him up real quick if we let him go. I don't know if he has any trade value. That's the issue. And then the last one is an interesting one to me, and it's Josh Adams. And I think Josh Adams has a real shot to make this roster with his fifth back. I will say this, though. A lot of analysts that I've been listening to, they don't really know much about Josh Adams. I'm here to tell you, as an Eagles guy that grew up in Newcastle, Delaware, and then moved to North Carolina, I do know a little bit about ACC football, especially being a you know, student who started off at NC State and things like that. And I got to watch Josh Adams play. I got to watch him play what basically became dubbed the Hurricane Bowl here in Raleigh a couple of years ago. Um, he's a, he's a really misunderstood guy. He's a bigger back. He's like, what, 6'2", 25-ish? He's a big guy. But he's not a bulldozer. And it's a commonly misunderstood thing. Everyone keeps kind of saying, like, oh, he's, he's that guy that has shown ability and he could be, you know, made into a replacement for Jordan Howard. Maybe he can, but he hasn't shown it yet to his career. He's not a bulldozer. See, people are making him out to be more Leonard Fournette-like more um, Jay Ajayi, LeGarrette Blunt, these guys that thrive on contact. And that's not his game. 
He's a big guy. That's not his game. I want you to think more Derrick Henry before he got his crap together the last couple of games of the season. He's a guy that has surprising top-end speed, but it takes him a while to get to the speed. He's not a 0-60 to 60 guy. He's a 60-100 to 100 mile power guy. He's got it, but he's a long strider and needs time to get there. He runs upright. That's a dead giveaway that you're not a contact guy when you run upright. You're not a contact. The whole point of contact, you got to get your pads lower than the next guy. Um, I think if he's in the right scheme, and that scheme needs to be his own blocking scheme, where it gives him the opportunity to really get into stride, he can be something. I think he has an outside shot here. I really do. I think the, I think he I think he got a lot of development last year. It wasn't all good. I'll admit it wasn't all good, but the kid developed. And he was a major recruit in college. He was shocking to have gone undrafted to me. I, I was shocked the year that he went undrafted. I was shocked the Eagles got him last year as a, you know, rookie free agent. It was a good it was a good find. Another one to Joe Douglas, who's now with the Jets, which sucks, but the guy he can analyze, man. He's got the football brains up here. So Scott, Smallwood, Adams, my prediction, Scott. But I can see the coaching staff loves Wendell Smallwood. And if you're looking for the utility knife, Smallwood. If you're looking for the developmental guy, I think it's more Josh Adams. That's my predictions on these young guys and being the possible fit. All right, guys. My closing statements. Let's just make some controversial statements. Let's piss off the rest of the fans of the league. Let's really piss off the Cowboy fans. Let's really make angry the Rams fans. Let's make the Seahawks fans get angry. Let's make the uh, Bears fans get angry. You know, let's make the Packers fans get angry. Let's make anyone who's got a shot at the playoffs get real angry. My prediction, we're going to walk to the Super Bowl. We're going to walk through the NFC. Not saying we won't drop a game here or there, but we're my prediction is with a stable running game and a healthy old line and a healthy, healthy Car Carson Wentz, no one's stopping us in the NFC. Nobody. Nobody in the NFC is matching this roster. The best they can hope for is a guy who's talented, talented enough like Drew Brees could pick and dip and dunk on us all day and try to keep our offense basically waiting on the sideline and make it a real game. That's the best shot I think that the NFC has. And I'm going to make a bigger prediction. The Eagles, in my opinion, they're going to be a top 10 rushing offense this year. Jordan Howard is that good of a back. I'm not saying that he's even the second best back in, in our division, because I don't think he is. I think he's the third best back. I think it's, you know, I think clearly Saquon Barkley is the, is the best back in our division. And I think your second best back is Ezekiel Elliott. And I think you make a case that those two might even be number one and number two in the league. And then I think you would have Jordan Howard. Um, with that said, I honestly, I think he's, I think he's that good. I think Miles Sanders, as he gets experience being that change of pace back, can be a difference maker. I think Corey Clement, healthy, splitting out, working the slot, picking up a, a tough yard or two here and there. Come on. Yeah, we saw what he can do. We, we've had, we had the opportunity to see how great Corey Clement can be. In the, we, he showed it in the Super Bowl. He's got to back it up from that performance. can't just be that one singular performance, but we know that he has a skill set to do it. And then Darren Sproles. Come on. It's Darren Sproles. Go ahead and kick. Go ahead and kick to him. Kick a punt. Go ahead. Tell your punters to kick directly to Darren Sproles. He's old. You can catch him. That's my prediction, guys. All right. If y'all can do me a favor, man, before I jump off of here, like, comment, subscribe, guys. That's all I got for y'all today. Hope this was entertaining to, you know, be the least of things here. All right, y'all. E A G L E S Eagles. I'm out.